welcome back. This is two of three of the Porsche 996 Turbo Boost Leak Test Series. And you know, I have to be honest, after thinking about it, it's not gonna be two of three, it's gonna be two of four. But once we're all done, we're gonna put it together, we're gonna take it out, and we're gonna put some of that boost to test. Do a little test drive, and we'll do a video of that. Okay, so, in this video, we're doing the testing. And we tested the top side, and I found the leaks are so big until there's no point in even trying to test on the bottom side yet. But I'm still gonna show you how to connect up to it, and this is how you do it. All right, these, in case you haven't seen the first video, these are um, fuel neck fillers. This is fuel filler neck tubes, and you can buy these on eBay for like 19 bucks. I see, I think it went down to 18 bucks now. And these seal really, really well. They have a gasket inside, okay, and it's threaded. This is aluminum, and the outside diameter, somebody asked me in the last video, and I mentioned it briefly, but the outside diameter of these is two inches. Two inches OD. So it will fit comfortably into the pipes. Nice and snug, and you tighten up your, your hose clamp. So, what I'm gonna do, because when I go back down to the car, this setup will already be in the white pipe, because I'm already on a leak testing, but I'll show you where these go. You just take the plug, this is the plug in, this is the pressure in, you put these down under the car into the outlet tube from the turbos. That is what we'll be looking at under the car. But you won't see any of this, I just want you to know that that is where these go, okay? All right, so some of you are wondering what these are. If you haven't seen my first video, you should watch that first series. Um, these are adapters that go onto the throttle body itself. This mounts directly onto the throttle body, and then you can pressurize uh, with your air. Now, the reason I would have something like this is sometimes the Wi Pipe has to come off, and then you can't connect with, with these. You can't connect to the Wi Pipe. You, you certainly can't connect to the turbo because the turbos, at the turbo, it goes through the intercoolers to the Wi Pipe. So if the Wi Pipe is missing, you can't pressurize from underneath or from the Wi Pipe using these adapters. So you want to use this and connect directly to the throttle body itself. Now, the size of this was simply dictated by the fact that I already had this particular connector. But you can use whatever size you want. Just as long as you have, like for example, you can use one of these in here. This is two inch, this is two and a half inch. The reason I used two and a half inch was because I already had this. And this is a two and a half inch um, reduction to three inch. I know, I know three inches is bigger than two and a half inch, but this is just called a reducer. So this is two and a half to three inch. I think the throttle is three inch, but I haven't checked yet. I should have checked by now, but I have it so don't quote me on this double check before you go and buy an adapter and be like oh man it's three and a half inches <laughs> anyway that's what these are for okay I do want to include one note of warning uh, this this particular hose that I have here it did not come off of a Porsche it came off of a Volkswagen but you have to be really, really, really careful about which ones you choose because the diameter sizes vary. It may look exactly the same, but it won't be. Here's an example. I purchased this on accident thinking it was the same. And when you look at them, they look pretty close. Even when you put them like this, they look pretty close, but they're not. So you really need to actually go out there with a, with a I don't know, a, a micrometer or something. And you gotta really make sure these are the same size because if they're not, they won't fit. And another thing too is sometimes they're, uh, ooh, they're actually this was this one was cut. I cut this one. This side is different from this side, and this came off with the same pipe, the same boost pipe for the intercooler. So these two are not the same size, but they came off the same hose. So you really want to be careful in looking at that if you're going to go to a wrecking yard, or you're going to borrow buddies, or you, whatever you're going to do, or you could just use the ones that come off of the, 
the Porsche and then you'll be fine. But the, these are used on many applications, Audis and Porsches and, you know, Volkswagens like this stuff, or Volkswagen. So that's just a quick warning to keep you guys from making the same mistake I did. So I'll show you a few uh, close-ups of this stuff so you can get, you know, kind of get a look at it in case you want to get them. And other than that, we're going to go back down to the shop and actually do the testing because this is the testing video. Next will be the actual repairs video. And then I'm actually going to do a fourth in the series of three. I'm going to do a fourth of us actually driving. parts that I suspect might be giving me some problems and primarily this little check valve right here I think this is going to be the one um, here's the part number and this is the Venturi which I'm not sure I don't really suspect the Venturi but I ordered one anyway and then these two little check valves they're cheap they're old I'm gonna replace them so I'm, I ordered two of those all of this is from Pelican Park here are the prices, here are the part numbers, and these are what the parts look like. Uh, this Venturi uh, valve, it has two check valves in it, one here and one here. And this goes right on top of where the Y pipe connects to the throttle. It's almost right, right on top of that, a little bit to the left. So I'll show you that when I go down and we'll go to the cross show where this is located. Um, I haven't found this one yet. Uh, <laughs> so when I find this one, I'll show you where this one is, and I'll show you where these two are. I think between uh, this check valve here and these two little check valves, that's where the problem is. I think the problem is here. Okay. So, there you have it. Alright, so I'm under the car now, and just to give you a reference of where we're looking at, this is the little oil reservoir for the turbo. And this is the uh, rear direction of the car pointing this way. So this hose right here is coming from the turbo and this is what you want to take a loose and put those plugs in. One will be a plug and then one will be a pressure uh, plug for the, the straighter valve. And one on each side of the car. And this is what they look like. All right. Here's another angle of that. Same one, this is the right side of the car. Here's the oil reservoir, and here is the tube. Okay. It's coming from the turbo, going to the intercooler, just like that. And you would take this hose clamp off and put your plug in here, and then you would pressurize up to the Y pipe. Okay, I couldn't help myself. This is the left side, driver's side in the US. And once again, here's the little ladder for holding oil for the, uh, the lubricated turbo. And then right here is the pipe that you would take a loose. And going this way is to the intercooler. cooler. So here is the, right here is the hose clamp you would take a loose and pressurize or plug whichever one you put. Doesn't matter which side you put it on. So. Now you see left and right. Okay, so we're back down to the car. We've lowered the engine quite a bit. 
And I think the number 16 check valve is right here. This little valve right here. This is the one I think is allowing air back into here and it's coming out and it's making it sound like the uh, air is leaking. Let me back this out a bit. It's making it sound like the air is leaking over here on this side because it's coming back through this and coming over here is what I believe. And then the Venturi is right in front of it, right here. This is the little Venturi. Okay, Doc, I'm gonna put some air through this. We're gonna see if we can uh, at least get an idea of where it's coming from. Get the mic in there so you can hear. It's definitely coming through here somewhere. Oh, it's like it's in the, in the intake manifold. You can hear it. Ah, oh, there's one of the check valves right here. I doubt if that's the issue, but there's one. I'll have to show show you that from another angle. But um, real quick, from the other side here, shooting from the left, there's one of the check valves. The little piece of white right there. I don't know if you can see it, but right down off from behind here. That is one of the check valves. And when I find the other one, I'll show you where that one is. Okay, the other check valve is called the number 16 check valve, and I think there's two of them. I mean, it looks like there's one here, for sure. I think that's it. And then there's another one right here at 90 degrees to it, farther back. I don't even know if you can see that far in there. But there's a valve here and there's a valve here. So I ordered two, and we'll see what they are. I'll, I'll get them out and I'll see what they are. And hopefully, they, this stops my boost leaks. Okay, so here's another test that I did I, I did earlier. So we're gonna put some air in here. This is our Venturi here, okay? And behind it is the check valve. It goes into this little, kind of like a little plenum, and then there's a check valve off of here. So I'm gonna plug both sides of where there should be check valves on this Venturi, and I still hear air coming through to this intake part. So that means it has to come through this check valve. So it's blown. So here we go. I'm gonna plug these up nice and tight. Put my fingers here like that. Put some air in there. You can hear it coming through over the other side. I let go, you hear it coming through both. So I know both of these check valves are blown in this Venturi, but I also know my number 16 here is, is gone as well. So there you go. Okay, so I'm done with the Venturi, so I'm gonna try and let you guys watch me take it off. I've got this trusty little, this, uh, this Bergen tool here. Oh my goodness. I'm glad I got this one I did. It's nice too, because as you depress the clamps, it ratchets and it holds it for you until you take it off. It doesn't open until you really release this little lever here. So that is nice. So let me see if I can take this off. Turn this over and get out of there. But these are, these will not be going back on. I can tell you that right now. So I get these little buggers off of here. They are off for good. So see, just depress, boop, take it off like that. And I have to release this to get it off. Now this is loose and I can just take my, let's see if it comes straight off. I don't know if it'll come off yet. I might have to pry it off. But yeah, that's how you take off that. Venturi, your Bergen tool. Highly recommend getting this if you're gonna get in there to get those clamps. Okay, here's a little tip on getting that Venturi valve out. Uh, stick a screwdriver in there and then take yourself some WD-40. Take the little tube, stick it in a little space and squirt some in there and then use the screwdriver to work it around to get that thing out because it's in there pretty tight. That uh, helped me out quite a bit. Let me just work it around. And I already, I already had it out, but there you go, Venturi. We will be replacing this. 
Here's a good example of this uh, Bergen tool really coming in handy. I'm taking off the number 16 check valve in the back and I've got the tool in there holding the clamp open for me while I'm going to go at it with this little screwdriver and try and gently work it loose. So I highly recommend investing in that tool before tackling this task and those hose clamps are pretty hard to get off. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit more pressure and I'm going to plug where I took the Venturi valve off of and I'm also going to plug the, um, the back side of the number 16 check valve where nothing should be coming out. Now I still do hear a small leak, but watch what happens when I take my finger off of those two locations once I add pressure. Here we go. I'm going to plug these two in my hand. Put some pressure on it and it's holding. I hear a little leak. Watch, listen to this when I take my fingers off. Holding pretty good. And it does the same thing if I do it individually. If I take it off, just the check valve. Leaking. And of course, this is leaking because the Venturi is not even on it anymore. So there you have it. Okay, I got another little tip for you. Some of these little clamps, these little clamps like that, excuse my dirty fingers, they are turned around to where you can't get to them with a, even with that Bergen tool, you can't get to them. So there's a little slit right here, okay? If you look at this slit, you can take a tiny little screwdriver like this, stick it in there, and then you can, and then you can crank the thing around and literally turn it and rotate it, uh, create a moment around that hose and you know, swivel it around to where you can reach it and get, get your tool on it. That's just a tip. Now you can see in the back where the uh, number 16 check valve was and the uh, Venturi double check valve was. I have plugged those up and there we go. I'm going to pressurize the system because I can hear another leak, a really a, a less uh, severe leak down below. The other thing I'm going to have to do, once I'm done with this and I put the uh, the brand new number 16 valve in and the brand new Venturi valve in, and put the Y pipe back in, and then I'm going to have to check um, the F pipe because the F pipe's not hooked up to anything right now. So. Um, you have to remember what's hooked up to what and what makes sense. So when I do that F-pipe, I'm going to have new diverter valves. I've already bought some new um, aluminum diverter valves and that's going to be in, a, in the last video. So now we're going to test. I think I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to go in there with some soapy water, Dawn, and some uh, stethoscope. I'm going to trust your stethoscope poke around and see if I can find where that little tiny leak I hear hissing down below. And then once I find that and everything holds, I'll put everything back together once the parts get here and check the F-pipe side. Get a load of this. I put 20 PSI in it. Guess who's leaking? My Schrader valve. So you gotta pay attention to everything. Tighten that up a little bit, we're good to go. So I'm gonna put a little bit more in there and I did hear another leak down very slight, but I do hear another leak. So, uh, put a little bit more in it. In fact, I'll just do that now. And uh, make sure it has. All right, what are we looking at here? Is that 20? Okay. And of course, when you do this, you want to use your trusty. After spraying the soapy water and poking around, we did find that the leak was coming from the gasket between the throttle body and the IPD plug. So we are going to replace that gasket.